We are celebrating our second year in our tiny shiny home. We realized that we never did a walkthrough to really explain in detail all the renovation decisions that we made. So we thought we'd do that today. Before we go any further though, we have to give a shout out to Ashley's family. Her dad spent six months, six days a week helping us finish this labor of love. His vast knowledge, expert craftsmanship, and huge workshop were integral to the project. Her mom helped watch the kids and provided countless meals for us while we were working nonstop to get it all done. And they both gave us a place to live during the whole process. We could have never done this project without them. This is a 1972 31-foot Airstream Sovereign land yacht. We have six people that we fit in here. And so two main goals with this renovation were, one, we love to camp off grid and boondock, which we're doing right now. And then number two, we really wanted to make sure that six people were able to fit comfortably in there. And, and I should mention, we travel full time. So this is really our tiny, shiny home. It's not, it's not just something that we go out on the weekends. And so we knew that when we were going to renovate this, it was going to be a lot to do. So we took the inside skins off. We dropped the belly pan. We rewired and re-insulated all new plumbing. Just about everything is new on this except for the shell. Let's take a, a walk around. Let's kind of look at the different things we had to do. So obviously a 46 year old trailer uh, is going to have some leaks. Um, and so we checked every single rivet when we started this, made sure they were all good. The ones that were bad, we drilled out and we replaced. But we did put new air conditioner and new fantastic vents up on top. We have 500 watts of solar that we somehow managed to cram up there. We have some internet antennas. We have a directional antenna, an, an omnidirectional antenna, and a Wi-Fi antenna. And then you can see the TV antenna up there that the directional is attached to. Now, thankfully, our awning was in really great shape, so the awning is all original. Even the windows are original. They're all single paned. We did have to uh, replace all the gaskets and the rails here. Uh, because they were all kind of falling apart, but we were really amazed at, at what great shape this trailer was in when we got it. The rock guard was already on here. Um, it did come with aluminum propane tanks, which we were really excited about. We added this really cool utility light here on the front in case you need it when you're working. We did have to replace the jack because the old one just completely gave out. We put in a port for a uh, ground deploy solar panel. So even though we have 500 watts on the roof over the last year or so, we've realized that just as a family we've grown and we're using more power and so we need this this extra bump in power and it's working out great. We had to patch a few places. This is where the old uh, radio antenna was. We did put brand new axles and tires on the Airstream. We decided to go with the the 16 inch Michelin tires, we've been really happy with them, haven't had any trouble at all. Uh, the new axles have been great, they were 45 degree axles, so we got between the tires and the axles, we got like three to four inches of lift. And then, even after being a year on the road, we decided to go even higher, so we added a lift kit to it. So now we're up about six inches, and that really helps going off grid. We don't bottom out as much. You can see that there's no color on the trailer, so these old models they really. They love that blue color scheme. And so we uh, took some paint thinner, we removed all that, and just kind of gives it a really nice, clean, modern look. It had a, had a power plug that was kind of stuck into the back compartment, and we decided we didn't want to store our power plug back there. So we added a new uh, 30 amp connection here. We did add a tankless water heater, which we really love. Um, and then even under here, there's a, a uh, thing to hold our sewer connection down there. We did replace the water inlet and uh, all the connections here for the sewer connection. We actually took the Airstream letters off. They were like blue and silver and so we took them off and, and sanded them down and repainted them. The only real issue that we had with leaks um, other than a few places up top was apparently this whole panel had been replaced at some point and the rivets they used were really big and they were leaking. Uh, and I think this door had been replaced at some point too, and it was leaking like crazy. So we tried about 20 different ways to, to make this stop and we ended up having to put big bolts in and caulk them. And then we ended up having to just seal this up permanently because every, every gasket we put on it, it still ended up leaking. So 
It's okay. It's right under the bathroom there. It's not like we needed to get to it anyway. We made sure to drop the belly pan underneath and we checked the frame. The frame was in really good shape, so we didn't really have to do anything there, thankfully. But we did replace the insulation. Believe it or not, this model Airstream only came with a black tank. All the gray water just ran through. So because we added a composting toilet, we converted that black tank to a gray tank, and then we added a second gray tank and combined those together. Um, and our fresh tank was in great shape, so we actually kept the original one. Now, we did re-insulate. We re-ran all the propane lines. Um, we did add, so this is the old battery compartment, because, but because all of our lithium batteries are up front, we added a little outdoor shower here. Over in this compartment, we added a 12-volt plug because we love our Green Mountain Grill that we smoke with all the time, and so it's got a 12-volt connection. So that's easy to plug in right there. And then we added a 110 connection back there as well, um, just for random outdoor power usage. The freshwater inlet is original. It doesn't have something you have to screw into. It's just a pour spout. And so we use our jugs to pour water in all the time. It's way easier to transport. You don't have to get a bunch of gear out and pumps and stuff to, to transfer the water. You know, and other than that, we did get it polished. So you can see it's really shiny. And so um, last year, we, uh, we went to Austin, we had a guy work on it, and man, it's just beautiful how shiny it actually is. But anyway, we know you want to see the inside, so that's where we're going now. So when you first come in to the Airstream, we've got the living room. Uh, this is our dinette, it's our bedroom, it's our movie theater, it's a multifunctional, multi-use space. And so when we designed this, we really wanted to make sure during the day that we would have a big table where we can we can eat, we can do arts and crafts, we can do homeschool, play card games, that there's plenty of room for all of us to sit around the table um, and actually, you know, have room for plates and food on it if we're eating and cups. Uh, and this really gives us a ton of space to be able to do that. The table will go down and the cushions will rearrange and it turns into a bed at night. And so that's where Ashley and I sleep. And then we can even uh, pile all the kids on and we can all watch a movie together if we want to. So there's a bunch of little details up here that we want to look at. So the first thing uh, are the light switches. We rewired all the lights. We use these little spaceship buttons where you can turn on, these turn on the outside lights and then uh, these other ones, they turn on the lights that are inside here. We really wanted to make sure that it felt like a home, so we didn't want to use those RV window treatments that get used a lot, so we made our own curtain rods. We just went and bought um, some aluminum bar, and we bent it and then screwed it into the wall. And then we just took some curtains that we actually used to have in our house, and we repurposed them. And we were able to, to bring them and use them uh, in this, so it feels a little bit more like home. In a lot of Airstreams, they have these windows up top called Vista windows. Can't tell from ours, because we modified ours a bit, but usually they look like this window down here. They're just curved and they're at the, the top. Usually they leave a big rectangle cutout in the aluminum where you can like pull a shade down. And the, the ones that ours came with was all yellow and it was gross. And we just decided to do something different. So we cut out these pieces of wood, we put circles in them, and then we mounted them to the wall and it gives it a really kind of different look. But we really like the way the light comes through and we think it's just a unique addition to the design of the Airstream. As you can see, this huge custom table has plenty of room. Now, we had a little extra space, so we added this shelf and this additional storage uh, so we can get a bunch of books and stationery up here and we can put, you know, little knickknacks, make it feel a little bit more like home. Speaking of home, we were able to bring in some of the stuff we had decorated in our original house and Ashley even made some macrame. You know, we got some air plants. Again, we've got the curtains. We just really love how homey it feels in here with all these little touches. Originally, this space had a big plastic end cap and it had a huge section that stuck out which had an eight track in it, a bunch of gauges and wires and stuff. And, you know, I would be hitting my head against it right now if it were still here. So we decided to take all that out, really open it up. We put new aluminum panels here. 
but we did keep the speakers and so you can still see that these are here we added these cool wood mounts to kind of make it a little bit more modern we just really like how it turned out now that you've seen this area in dinette mode we're going to convert it to a bed and show you what it looks like at night taking all the tops off to make it a little easier to show you what's inside. Over here, this is our shoe drawer. So we've got all our shoes in here. It's right when you come in the front door so that uh, it's easy to put your shoes up and get them out of the way. Not that anyone actually does that, whatever. Uh, over here we've got hiking backpacks and travel backpacks and uh, blankets for when it gets cold. Over on this side, uh, we've got a bunch of camera equipment that's easy access because we shoot stuff all the time. And then back in here, we've got just a bunch of random stuff. We've got a uh, safe with some documents. We've got some screws and printer cartridge and books and papers and, and different things like that. And now the fun part. We get to show you our power setup. A big part of renovating this Airstream for camping off-grid was solar and batteries and so this lithium battery bank you can see here in the middle section was a big part of that it's 400 amp hours lithium batteries are much better suited for sort of long-term uh, boondocking trips and you can also see on the lid we've got all the wires uh, they all come in through this and they're all labeled and they're all easy to get to this is really sort of the command center for the power in the airstream now over on the left side, back against the wall, we have the converter, which charges the batteries when we're plugged in shore power. And we also have solar charge controllers. We actually have two now. We've got 500 watts on the roof. Uh, we have one solar charge controller for those panels. And then we have another solar charge controller for our new 200 watt ground deploy uh, that plugs into the front of the Airstream. Over on the right side, we have a 2000 watt inverter. Uh, and we have the BMS, which is the battery management system, which is basically just the brain that tells all of the battery cells to charge at the same time, to shut off if there's a problem with temperature or voltage. This really protects those batteries. Because these are lithium batteries, uh, they don't have to be vented. And so this means we can keep them in here. They're more temperature controlled. And this setup really lets us camp off grid for weeks at a time. Right next to the dinette, as we continue down, we've got this chase. It's there for a reason. See, we have a bunch of electrical wires that we're running from the back of the trailer all the way to the front, and all of our solar panels, the wires come down through the refrigerator vent, and they, they join up here, and then they go up to the front of the power shitter, which we already saw. So we needed a way to cover all that up and, and provide a way to run those wires, so we decided to make it a little bit more functional, too. So. We created this nice little shelf. Sometimes we put plants on there. Sometimes we set drinks on there. A little charging port here so we can charge our watches at night. And then we did make a tiny little door, drawer, I don't know. I put my backpack in there. It fits nicely. And then down below there, uh, you can access that. You can get to some of the wires and connections, but we don't get back there very much. There's a little switch down there you can see. So we use hot spots for our internet and those batteries don't like to be plugged in all the time. So we put that in so we could turn that whole stuff off at night uh, to save those batteries. Now this is coming down a little further. This is sort of my office. I do have to work while we're on the road and so I do uh, graphic design and websites. And so I need a big monitor. Uh, I need a color accurate monitor and it really helps having uh, you know, multiple documents up side by side when I'm doing code. We built this little um, shelf here where I get to keep my, my laptop, wireless mouse, wireless keyboard, uh, wireless headphones, and traveler's notebook. Now, <clears throat> the reason all that stuff is wireless is because I have a standing desk. So I don't, I don't sit here. You can see this isn't a great place to sit. But it does hide a trash can. Ta -da. So we came up with this crazy standing desk idea that we hadn't really seen anywhere else. So it's a combination of two pretty basic things. The first is a tripod. 
We just have one of these mounts on top. Found a company called Tether Tools, and they make, I don't know if you can see this, but they make a mount that goes into that, right? Uh, and we just took some of the wood that we used on the table, we mounted it into it, and then that lets me slide it right in and make my own standing desk. So what's really cool about this is that it works a bunch of different ways, right? So I can put my, <clears throat> my keyboard and mouse, so usually this is how this is how it looks, right? I'm standing here. I've pulled the monitor out and up. And then I've pulled this up so that it's at the right level. So this is usually what I'm what I look like working during the day. Now sometimes we are somewhere where there's not a ton of like sun, maybe it's cloudy or rainy or we're under some trees and I'm trying to save power. This guy takes up a ton of power, so sometimes I don't use him. So what I'll do is I'll just replace this, right? So I'll put the keyboard down here, pull the laptop up here. And then this gives me, I can move in a little bit so people can get by me. Um, and so I can work like this. Here's the thing though, like sometimes this bed doesn't get turned into a table and maybe I want to sit down. Well, then I can just rearrange it. I can pull this down to a lower level and I can just sit on the edge of the bed and I can work that way. This monitor can pull all the way out around. So maybe, maybe everybody's up front and they're all doing their thing and I don't want to get in their way. And so I could pull that all the way back around here and I could stand right here and work. When you're done, you know, it folds up. Just stick your stuff back on the table, take the top off, set it here. And then I've got room in that drawer where I can put the tripod and it doesn't get in the way at night, which is really the biggest thing. Now, the cool thing about the monitor is because it's connected to the laptop is that we can use it as a TV at night. So a lot of times when the bed is down, we'll get everybody on the bed. We'll have like a family movie night. We'll pull the monitor out and we'll all just sit there. We'll either download a movie or we'll stream one off of Netflix or Hulu or whatever. And it's really easy to take down for travel. Obviously we don't want to drive with this because it's got a huge arm and it could go swing around and make a huge mess. So you just pull it out, grab your cables, and it slides right off of that post there. And then we usually set it somewhere on the, on the bed here while we travel. Behind the monitor, we got a bunch of stuff over here, so I'm just going to go through it real fast. The first is the thermostat. So this controls our furnace and our air conditioner. We set the temperature, we turn it on. Uh, it's just kind of out of the way. We don't get to it that much, but when we need it, it's there. Then we have a bunch of internet stuff, right? So we talked about how we have a directional, an omnidirectional antenna. We have a Wi-Fi antenna, and all three of those come in here. Now you can't see back in this area there's um, a wee boost so that takes the cell signal and it actually boosts it and it increases it in conjunction with that antenna so then it takes that boosted signal and it sends it to this little square or rectangle right here so we have a verizon hotspot and an at&t hotspot and depending on which signal is better we will uh, just plug in the right one which goes to our router and so because we have six people in here, we didn't want to have to deal with, oh, you know, which hotspot are we, we using today or which Wi-Fi network are we using? We always connect to our Wi-Fi network and then that Wi-Fi network is connected to whatever internet uh, signal that we choose to have for wherever we're at. This makes my life much easier. Other than that, you know, we've got, you know, the plug for running the monitor and anything else. We've got uh, a coax cable, which we've never used, but it was there in the original install and there was a big hole in the metal so we decided to put it there and you know little things to hold pencils and stuff like that but yeah that's pretty much it the uh this is my my work area my standing desk uh it also doubles as an entertainment center so there's a lot packed in this little corner let's talk about the kitchen when you first come in the door we've got a, a wall here with a bunch of hooks for you know jackets and backpacks and purses we have a way to turn our water pump on and off 
and we have a furnace vent, so our furnace blows hot air so it keeps us warm at night when we're sleeping. Moving further down, we have our stove and our oven. We've got a nice little place for me to put my keys in my wallet, and it's, it's mounted down so it doesn't move. We don't have to take it off when we travel. Ikea storage things here. We've got the Vitamix, a massive kitchen sink, nice big window so you can see out. We tried to plan that so that when you're washing dishes, you can see the beautiful places you're at. We've got some knife storage over here, and also this stays up while we travel. Uh, this is also from Ikea. It's really strong, and so we have never had a problem with that. We've got these awesome bird hooks that Ashley really likes, and we are able to hang some fruit from them or some other knickknacks. Cutting boards, essential oils, uh, and then we've got this overhead storage, right? So up here, uh, this is where Ashley and I keep our jackets. This is where we keep all of our towels and our washcloths. And then this is actually uh, connected to all of our solar and our battery. And so this lets us see how much power we have coming in uh, here. And then this shows us what our battery capacity is. And we went ahead and we installed a radio to hook up to the speakers that we showed you earlier. And we've got this, which is connected to that external antenna. And when we we turn it on and boost it, it actually helps us get better AM, FM radio signals. Now down below, we've got big open storage here. The furnace lives here. It lives right under the oven. And we've got our water pump, which we use a ton because we boondock a lot. Uh, we've even got a, a water holding tank. So what the holding tank does is that it pressurizes, I think it's about a half a gallon of water uh, so that the water pump isn't constantly running. So It'll pressurize it, and then we can use about half a gallon before it has to kick back on, which is nice. Further down, we have a bunch of drawers. So in the top one, we have cooking utensils, spices. In the next one, we actually have a bunch of tools and sort of utility things. It's amazing how often in an old trailer you need a screwdriver to tighten something up. We keep those all right here. This drawer uh, keeps a bunch of containers. And then this actually isn't a drawer, but it opens up like this. And the reason for that is because uh, the ducts from the furnace have to run all the way back, and they needed a space to do that. This is for the TV antenna, which also has our internet directional antenna on it. And so this lets us crank it up, and we can actually take it and we can turn it and point it directly at a cell phone tower. So over on this side is our pantry. So up top here, we've got a bunch of food that we can store. You'll notice there's some reflectics up here, and we use that uh, during the summer to keep chocolate chips from melting and, and things like that. And right here is more food storage. Now down below, we really wanted to uh, create like a really useful space. We actually custom built um, this whole assembly specifically for the plates and the utensils that we had. And we also built in extra power back here. Now you're probably wondering what this is. This is a Berkey, it's a water filter. And we use this thing all the time. It removes so much bad stuff from the water. You could pour creek water in here and it would come out and it would be safe to drink. And so take our water, we just pour it in the top, it filters it through and it comes out clean to drink on the other. <clears throat> and Ashley made these really cool uh, little macrame skirts. <laughs> that it's hooked into the wall back here so that we can actually travel with this on the counter and not have to worry about putting it up even if it's got some water in it. Moving on, this is what we call the garage. We call it the garage because it can go down like this and we can kind of hide stuff away and we can store stuff in here when we travel. But most of the time, it's up like this. And so we custom built this little guy. It's a basically a charging station. Uh, all the kids will stick their iPads in here at night. Ashley keeps her laptop here. We store some books, a bunch of random knickknacks and cables and, and Kleenex and notebooks and just sort of various things. And then we have our refrigerator. So this is a 12 volt refrigerator. Because we have a big lithium battery bank, uh, we don't use propane for the fridge. It runs all off 12 volt and it doesn't look huge, but it's actually pretty good size. It's seven and a half cubic feet. So it goes back really far, even 
even though the freezer looks small, it goes back. Like you can fit a couple of frozen pizzas in there, a big 10 pound bag of ice will slide all the way back in. It's really like a good size for our family. And we love that it's not based on those janky RV fridges that switch between propane and electric and you never know which one's going to work. And just a regular compressor, it works all the time. So, and you'll notice too that this whole area is really wide. Um, the original Airstream, I think it had walls coming into like here, you know, and so we, there's a lot of us, there's six of us in here. We have to go back and forth. We're constantly moving through this space. So we wanted to make sure that we kept it as wide as possible. Um, to make it feel really open and just so we don't get in each other's way. Over here, we have our big drawer. It's really just sort of our junk drawer. Um, pens and pencils, art supplies, you know, Tic Tacs, packets of honey, whatever. And down below is where we keep our pots and pans, the Instant Pot, some bowls. It's a really big, useful storage space, but it's for things that we don't get to very often. In this area, we wanted to add some lights underneath here because it gets kind of hard to see back there. So you can turn lights off and on there. And then same thing here, which is really more important. We do a lot of food prep here. We wash a lot of dishes. And so we added three lights under here that you can turn off and on. Now you may have noticed that there's not uh, a vent hood and it's usually, you know, a stove has an area that's vented to the outside. We have three fantastic fans, one up front, one here, one back in the bathroom. And this one just happened to land right near the stove. And so we decided to use this because they're really powerful. And so this will suck the steam or the propane fumes or whatever out while we're cooking. And that way we're able to use this for our power and we could put the lights there and we didn't have to worry about it. A couple of important things we wanted to mention. The first is the interior walls. So we had to take them off to rewire and re-insulate. And we really loved how some of the newer Airstreams just had bare aluminum on the inside. So we actually ripped all the vinyl off of these walls and then put them back up. It was a huge pain, but it turned out really good. Second is the floor. We use vinyl planks and we put it in last so that it would be a true floating floor. This means that any problem areas around the edges, we actually see the subfloor and we can check for leaks and it meant that we didn't have to use as many planks and so we saved a lot of weight. And finally, our ceiling. This runway houses our 12 volt LED lights, it keeps our wiring clean and accessible, and it looks pretty good too. Let's go check out the kids' room. But first, because many of you ask, yes, we do have privacy. It's not much, but we make it work. It was really important to us that the kids each had their own space in the trailer. So we had to modify this whole area quite a bit. And it got really tricky because you've got the wheel wells that you have to deal with. You've got the windows um, and you're trying to create bunks that are sort of suspended in midair. So there's a lot of engineering that went into this. I know it looks really simple, but there's a lot going on like underneath and behind the scenes that make it all work. But first, let's look at like how the kids are able to personalize their areas. Each kid has their own light, reading light. They've got their own 12 volt plug so they can charge their iPad. They've got their own regular plug in case they have something else they need to plug in. And we also installed these little Christmas lights here that uh, kind of run all the way here. And we do this a lot uh, when we're boondocking and we don't want to have a ton of lights on, but we just need a little bit. So it creates sort of a nice ambience, right? We also added, you know, little shelves so that they can put their knickknacks in it. We all have hydro flasks uh, that we drink out of. And so they've got a hook to keep that there out of the way. And then they've all got walls and they can put, you know, whatever they want to on them and stuffed animals and stuff like that. Now remember speakers, right? We talked about speakers earlier. So those other two speakers, they go here and here on each side and they're hooked into the radio. And so they can rock out back here if they really want to. At the other end of the bed, we put a hook and these really nice e-bag backpacks, which lets each kid store their own items so that they're not all over the bed making a mess. So one really cool feature about the beds is that these top bunks actually fold down into couches. So we've got these big carriage bolts under here. You can loosen those up. There's four of them and the top of each bed folds down. So you have two massive couches. Like I mentioned, building these bunks was 
quite the engineering feat. Obviously, we wanted to make sure these were really safe, right? So that starts with the wall. So this is a three quarter inch plywood wall uh, that this cabinet and all these cabinets, they're all attached to. And then this is a half inch wall with uh, two by fours behind it for extra stability. It's like a mini framed wall. And then what we did is you can kind of see this bunk is actually built in two pieces. So there's this piece that is mounted to the walls and actually mounted into the ribs of the Airstream. And then we added these hinges and then uh, we use carriage bolts underneath. So I'll show you real fast. And this lets it fold all the way down. And as you can see, these are big bolts. So it's super secure when it's all, it's all in there. You can set an adult up on top of this bed and it's not going to go anywhere because it's attached to the wall and it's attached to both of these side walls at the same time. In a small space, storage is really important. So you can see we've got storage lining above and below the kids' bunk. So we're going to show you how we're using each of those. Now down here, we talked about the wheel well earlier. And so these aren't actually drawers because the wheel well is kind of just a little ways back in here. But we do still have some room to store some books and games, toys, and stuff like that. Now as you go further back, these are drawers, right? So these come all the way out. This is our craft drawer. And then this is where the kids keep a lot of their toys and stuff like that. Here on the other side, we had to run all of our furnace vent ducts, a lot of our plumbing, um, our water lines. And so there are no drawers here, but we do have, again, these fold down sections. And so this is just more books and notebooks and toys and pens and pencils and stuff like that. And this drawer right here, this is actually, you can pull it down, but because it's connected to the furnace, we try not to do that because the, the vent is connected right to it and it'll pull off if you open it up. So up top on this side, we keep most of our uh, blankets and sheets. So our, the bed up front during the day when it's a table, all that stuff has to go somewhere. So it all lives up here. On this side, uh, we keep hiking backpacks, kids' jackets, and um, our workout equipment. And one thing we didn't talk about was these little uh, push button latches. So when you push them in, it actually keeps the door from going anywhere. It can't open. And so you probably noticed every drawer, every door opening, uh, every cabinet, they all have these, so we have to lock them every time we go. But they're really nice because, you know, when they go in, they're really low profile and they just look really nice too. Finally, we're going to look at the bathroom. First thing you see is the sink. We have this really nice big window, so uh, we put a sink here, a uh, faucet, a uh, little countertop, it matches the countertop in the kitchen. And then underneath, we've just got some standard storage. Now there's a lot of stuff hidden here too. Back in the corner, we have an Ikea mirror mounted. Uh, we've got our toothbrushes back there. We've got some towels. We've even got our laundry bag back here, which a lot of RVs don't have a space to put your dirty laundry. So we're, we're glad we were able to kind of stick it back in the corner there. Now, moving on, you know, we've got spaces for toothpaste and stuff like that here but then we also have our shower now our shower is not the fanciest shower but we have six people um we're camping off grid a lot tile wasn't really an option for us it's just hard to clean hard to maintain we're going down a lot of bumpy roads we didn't feel like that would be the best idea so one thing we did do is we got this extendable shower bar so it can be out of the way or it can come out like this which is really handy now, as far as the actual shower itself, you know, this is just a standard RV shower. We did do a tub because we've seen a couple of situations where people's gray tanks overflowed and we wanted to have a little insurance there just in case something like that were to happen. Inside here, we've added a bunch of hooks for washcloths. It came with a little shelf that we keep some of our bar soaps on, razor. And then 
for the shower, we wanted to uh, put something in that would work for multiple size people. You can slide this up and down and uh, this works really great for when the kids are taking a shower. Also, you know, if you get a chance, replace the, the actual shower head that your RV comes with. This is an Eco Camel and it uses, it sucks air in this hole and it, it makes the water pressure higher. It makes it feel like you're getting a shower with more water when you're actually using less, which is also great for camping off grid. So we do have a composting toilet. We keep our trash can back there. Uh, we have a pull handle for our gray tank. And then this guy right here is our, basically our closet. This is all of Ashley's clothes and my clothes here in this top section. And then all of the kids' clothes fit right here. We've got some towels, um, some toiletries, socks, things like that. And then down here, we use this area to hide the tankless water heater, which we love, by the way. Super efficient, runs on propane. Basically, it means it'll make hot water as long as we have propane. And then also, you can kind of see there's a bunch of wires back in there. This is where our 30 amp plug comes in. So there's a transfer switch there, our original breakers for the air conditioner and the 110 power back there. And then finally, we've got the ruler. The ruler was in our house, it's been with us. You can see all the kids as they've grown over the years. Uh, we really didn't want to lose this when we left the house, and this is literally the only space it would fit. <laughs> There's no flat wall that doesn't run into the curve that's tall enough, but we were able to make it fit here, so we were pretty excited about that. Um, we've got the vent here, like we talked about earlier, with the fantastic fan, so <clears throat> when we're taking showers, we're able to suck all that moisture out. If you come around here, we have one tiny hidden storage space. We call it the guitar closet. So back in here, between the shower wall and the kids wall. This does provide us access to the back of the shower components in case something were to go wrong. But we have some ukuleles back here. We've got my guitar. Also, because this door uh, is translucent, we have a curtain that we can put up. Sometimes, you know, in the morning, the sunlight's coming back through the window and you're backlit, you know, and you just don't wanna show everybody your silhouette while you're changing. <music> And that concludes the tour of our 1972 Airstream. If you want to know even more about this project, go to tinyshinyhome.com slash Airstream. We've got progress updates, information about our internet setup, and even a complete cost breakdown with links to everything we bought during the renovation. If you like camping off-grid and boondocking, make sure you go to tinyshinyhome.com slash boondocking, get your own free guide to find an epic boondocking spot. At the beginning of this video, we mentioned that we were celebrating two years in our tiny shiny home. And what an awesome two years it's been. Renovating this vintage trailer for Camping Off Grid has taken us so many places we never would have gone and saved us thousands in campground fees. From the jaw-dropping coastline views up the Pacific Coast Highway to the pristine beaches in Florida or the endless saguaro-dotted desert in Ajo to the snow-capped Tetons, we continue to be so incredibly thankful for this journey we're on. Hey friends, we hope you enjoyed this tour of our tiny shiny home. We hope you'll subscribe and you'll follow us and we'll see you down the road. Bye! Bye. Bye.